If you've been told you have tendonitis, tendinosis, tendinopathy, you're not quite sure what you have, you know you have tendon paid up, and we want to think about creating Foot, and we think of a bunion having a little kick. Uh, I had a patient the other day that asked me, I threw out the term tendinosis tendinopathy, and he was like, well, What's tendinitis? So, we're going to talk about any kind of injury involving a tendon. We need to talk about the continuum of tendon injuries. And to start, we need to talk about the umbrella term of tendinopathy. So, opathy deems that something is wrong, that we have some sort of pathology with a tissue, and obviously it's a tendon. So tendinopathy. So that in itself is a catch-all term. So if you've been diagnosed with a tendinopathy, it's not that specific. So we have to dig a little deeper. So tendinitis, that's the most common thing. I mean, think if we, you know, uh, lateral epicondylitis, Achilles tendinitis, patellar tendinitis, we throw out this itis, and the itis deems that something is inflammatory. So tendinitis is going to have two phases or two subcategories. You're going to have acute tendonitis, and that's part of the definition of tendonitis. It's the acute uh, irritation of a tendon without disrepair. So you'll see disrepair lead this tendon to our next step. Now, if that acute phase goes on a little bit too long, you're going to have reactive tendonitis. That means that the tendon itself is starting to thicken. That's how a tendon heals uh, to bolster against that acute inflammatory scenario. So when either one of these, acute or the reactive, go under this for too long, we get into the chronic stage, what we have is we have disrepair of that tendon tissue. When we have disrepair, now we're into tendinosis. So osis means cellular death. We're starting to lose uh, the tendon cellular matrix. We're not repairing fast enough to keep up with the demand. So that's the difference between tendinitis, tendinosis, tendinopathy is the umbrella. And obviously down here, we have rupture. Uh, that can be an acute rupture, that could be chronic, right? I've kind of slowly, I talk about the butter knife uh, on, a, on a rope, if you look, think about an old movie scenario, and that rupture obviously can happen for a lot of reasons, but there's probably, I would almost say unequivocally, there's an unhealthy tissue or tendon that led to that rupture. Rarely, even in the acute scenario, it looks acute, but it's just like the ice cube that's trying to melt. You, you know, 25 degrees, 26, 27, nothing happens until it hits 32. That rupture happens when that perfect storm hits. Um, no pun intended with the umbrella. So let's talk about why. So why do tendon injuries occur? We talked about the health of tendons in general. So uh, poor nutrition, diet, sleep, over time, those things do wear down on our tissue matrix. But let's be a little more specific. So mechanical or capacity overload. When you look at the research on how to go about treating or rehabbing tendon injuries, which we're gonna get into in the next video, you'll see a lot about creating more capacity or creating a, a more tolerance to the same activities through different loading strategies, which we're gonna talk about. But this mechanical capacity overload could be that we've just done too much too soon. We haven't gone, we've gone up against a continuum of how long it takes a tendon to accommodate or adapt. And if we look at the accommodation or adaptation time frame of tissues in our body, we just look at the big generality of tissues, muscle takes about 12 weeks to adapt. You look at something like a tendon, it could be upwards of a year to fully adapt to the stressors or rigors we're putting upon it. Now, a subcategory or maybe a, a twin to that category is bio, biomechanical or mechanical aberration. This gets kind of hem hawed and discussed and uh, disagreed with and thrown around in my field of, do biomechanics matter? If I have altered biomechanics, does that actually cause a tendinopathy? I tend to think it does, and research shows that it does. In particular, when those biomechanical aberrations, dysfunction, lead to shearing. So when we talk about shear force, think if you have a, a patellar tendon that likes to operate in the sagittal plane for the most part, and then I have a little cave in or valgus low to my knee, now I have shearing across that tendon, no bueno, right? Tendons and most tissues in our body do not like shear force and they, they try to adapt as best they can by going under a reactive tendonitis, but when they can't, we start to get some, uh, some overall thickening of that tissue, which then allows it to not have its elastic recoil properties and pretty soon we're getting into these lower levels of pathology. Now trauma, 
You can have acute trauma without unhealthy tissue. That's going to be rare. You uh, jump out of an airplane and you're uh, told not to uh, what's called flare too early like I did the first time I skydived and you fall from about 25 feet. You can have a tendon injury with probably a healthy tendon. So trauma does happen. We have to keep that in mind. Medications. I also just had a patient just the other day that took two rounds of what's called Leviquin. So Leviquin, a little side note, is a fluoroquinolone. Fluoroquinolones are notorious for causing degradation of collagenous tissue, which is collagen is what makes all tissues in our body. So certain medications can be very deleterious to our soft tissues, and that's something to be aware of, especially if you're traveling overseas. That tends to be a not as much anymore, but obviously it's still happening, a prophylactic uh, antibiotic that was used if you're traveling overseas to certain areas. And then in that same kind of category are autoimmune disor uh, disorders. A very common one that affects your ability to repair tissue just with that disorder are thyroid disorders. And then the medications that we take to offset those thyroid disorders, whether it's a natural form or synthetic form, uh, like Synthroid or Naturethroid, those tend to throw our body into a little bit of a hormone uh, unbalance that makes it again harder to repair tissue, especially if we're going at it with a rigorous activity, if we're a runner, a crossfit, or whatever it is. So those are all the categories that keep in mind. All, there's, it could be a conglomeration of these, could be standalone, could be other factors that obviously play into this. Uh, you gotta you know, always take your patient into mind, have they had things like radiation, chemotherapy, those types of things. Last thing I wanna talk about are just these kind of offshoots. So we're talking about specific diagnosis, and this may get a bit in the weeds if you're a patient, but for a doc, being specific up front, so front loading your exam so you can know how, or you can move faster throughout treatment, things like an enthesiopathy, right, which is the connection of a tendon into the bone, which tends to be uh, very common uh, when we get into kind of like periostitis, enthesiopathy with things like uh, shin splints or Achilles tendinosis, insertional Achilles tendinosis, knowing like what are the different treatment strategies when we're dealing with different areas of the tendon? The most commonly injured area of the tendon is the musculoskeletal junction, or uh, musculotendinous junction, sorry, because that's the area that's gonna take the most strain stretch across it. Uh, things like tenosynovitis. So tenosynovitis means that we have a lack of movement between the tendon and the sheath, uh, the synovium that encircles that tendon, and now that lack of movement is creating an aberrant uh, a load across it, which then leads into this kind of tendinosis or disrepair category. And then peritonitis. So this is not peritonitis, right? Peritonitis would be something down here. Perotenonitis is, again, the sheath, same category as tenosynovitis. This is just uh, to make the clinicians out there make sure that we're being as specific as we can. Even though sometimes we say, hey, you shouldn't label things, you shouldn't diagnose things, don't, don't make your patient own that diagnosis. I can promise you one thing. If somebody has a reactive Achilles uh, enthesopathy, they want to know what it is so we can help them create a loading strategy, treatment strategy, and uh, return to play or activity strategy as fast as we possibly can. Hope you guys learned something. Next video, we're going to be going over rehab and treatment strategies for this tendon injury continuum. See ya.